What's up? It's Pat from Broadside. Uh, I play bass and I'm going to be taking you through my gear today. Currently we are on tour, uh, our very first headliner tour. Uh, we have Sharia Moore, First and Forever, and Young Culture. Uh, I think we are in the final week. We have about six more shows. Pretty sick tour so far uh, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so this right here is, I would say, my main bass. It's a Fender Jazz bass. Um, it's completely stock except for the Babix full contact hardware high mass bridge that I put on it. Um, I really like these bridges because in addition to uh, selecting the action, uh, there's also a locking screw so that you can lock the action in place so you don't really ever have to go into much uh, detail whenever you're re-intonating it. Um, we got volume, volume, tone. Everything's just wide open all the time. I'm using both. Both of these pickups are just run uh, full up all the time uh, because it tends to get a little buzzy if I were to turn one down. Um, just got a couple stickers on it. Uh, yeah, and this is my main base. I've had this for about 10 years. Ever since I started touring, this was like my main base. I would play every single show with this. On this one, I have the Ernie Ball Power Slinky four string pack. Uh, it's, I believe it's a 110 to 75 or 70. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the top string is a 110. All of our songs are in drop C sharp. Uh, so C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp. <laughs> I bought this bass off of Franz from Attila for $300. All right, this next bass is uh, really special to me because this is actually the first bass that I ever got. This started out as an all black Squire precision bass. Um, I got it back when I was in seventh grade. Uh, and I started using this a couple of days ago um, I bring it with me as a backup, but I started using this primarily a couple of days ago, and I think I'm going to finish the tour with it. Um, like I said, it started out black. I sanded off all the finish, kind of, kind of mucked it up back there, but you know, it just makes it look, look cool. Uh, sanded all the finish off, yellow body. I matched the headstock and then sanded the back of the neck so it's nice and smooth. Um, I put the EMG Geezer Butler P bass pickups in it. Um, these are passive EMGs, super simple, plug and go, uh, as opposed to like soldering the pickups again. Uh, one volume, one tone, volume all the way up, tone all the way up, and then I put a Perloid pickguard on it. It was just a plain white one before. This one also drops C sharp, C sharp, G sharp, C sharp F, uh, Ernie Ball Power Slinky 110, the purple pack. For my pedal board, I'm running the Shure, I believe this is the GLX D. 14 wireless um, and I like this one because it's a digital wireless and it's got a tuner in the uh, Receiver so instead of having a tuner and a wireless receiver. I can just hit that and start tuning um, Then I've got the dark glass super symmetry compressor uh, Going into the boss ns2 noise suppressor. Um, I run it like this because I saw a buddy of mine, Joe from the band uh, Homebound in the UK. That's how he was running his so I just figured why not? I'll do that too. Um, this Electro Harmonics Pitchfork um, is actually Dom's. He's letting me borrow it for this tour because there's a couple, I think two songs in the set where I just use it for an octave down um, and then put the blend in at three quarters so that you can still hear the high, the high note but then also the low note. So it kind of sounds like an organ almost. Um, I'll use that for the beginning of Laps Around a Picture Frame and then the end of The Raging Sea. Um, and then from there, I'll go into what my main tone box is. It's the Dark Glass Microtubes B7K Ultra. Um, I really like this pedal uh, because it can do literally anything that I need it to. You can have it on without the, uh, the drive uh, so that you just have the EQ section going or you can have it with the drive on. I'll use it uh, without the drive for like a cleaner tone in the mellower uh, verses and then click the drive on for the choruses. Or if it's a pretty fast song or aggressive sounding song, then I'll just keep the drive on the whole time. The thing I like about this pedal is that on the DI out, uh, Dark Glass has a cab simulator. Um, so I have that actually running to this side, pa side patch panel that I got from BTPA. Um, shout out Brad. So I've got the power, the DI going to the dark glass, and then the quarter inch out that'll go to my amp. Oh, all of these are being powered by a Strymon Zuma power supply mounted underneath the board. 
And so that will go into my amp. It's an orange terror bass. I've had this for probably about as long as I've had the jazz bass, about 10 plus years. Um, bought it off a buddy of mine. It's been working for me really well. Um, yeah, and I love it. So most of the tone is coming from the dark glass. I'll use the, the EQ on the head just to make any fine adjustments. Maybe boost a little bit of the bass in the mid and cut a little bit of the treble. Um, and then this thing gets pretty loud, so that's why I've got the gain and the volume before noon. Uh, because even for 500 watts, this thing pushes a lot of power and a lot of sound. And then from that, I'm running it into my cab. Fender 6x10 bass cab, uh, running at 4 ohms. I believe it's an 800 watt cab. Yep, 800 watts. Got this right before the tour. I downsized from a Ampeg 8x10. It's a lot easier to move around. Uh, kind of weighs the same, uh, which doesn't make sense to me, uh, but I'll take it. It'll take up less space in the trailer. And I believe these are all Eminence speakers. The person that I bought this from off of Craigslist, he'd gotten the speakers replaced like a year ago um, because they all blew, but it works fine. It's been working for me and it sounds great every night. For picks, we get picks from Intune guitar picks. Uh, I believe Dom and I both use a one millimeter pick. Um, and then we are all on ears from this company called In Ears in Castleberry, Florida. Uh, they came out on Warps in 2018 to fit us for them. And then we've been using them ever since. Anybody wants to keep up with us, Broadside Official on Instagram, Broadside underscore on Twitter. Either of those places will have any other tour dates that we have coming up and any other releases that we have planned.